This is my 2003 Nissan 350Z Enthusiast Coupe. I'm gonna to try to go over every single modification, every single upgrade that I've made or that's been done to this car. All off the top of my head, let's dive into it. So we'll start from the underside of the car, underneath the car, the engine stuff, uh, and work our way up. Try to do this as efficiently as possible. So we got ISR coilovers, uh, rear adjustable control arms, Z1 front, upper adjustable control arms, all new lower control arms in the front end of this car. Uh, we got Moog front end lengths, uh, fresh front sway bar bushings. We got a Z1 rear sway bar with white line end lengths. Uh, we got Z1 Motorsports subframe bushing collars, Z1 rear diff bushings, uh, the whole kit. And then we got the Bell Raceworks diff brace. Fresh diff fluid. I mean, that makes a big difference if you're working on your uh, rear diff, you gotta change the fluid. That whole setup makes this car handle incredibly well. Um, we still got the factory VLSD, uh, but we got the housing painted gloss black. We got the cool gold speed culture uh, decal on it. We also did the 370Z rear axle and hub upgrade with new hardware. That's a pretty nice upgrade. Makes they're a little bit more substantial, so they're going to be a little bit more durable hold up to the abuse. Obviously, the front end control arms just make the car feel a lot better as well, uh, especially combined with that, the, the rear sway bar. Rubber parts, bushings, ball joints, all that stuff wears out and, uh, you know, just makes the car feel weird. And uh, everything is just tight and nimble now. It's, it's so good. Moving on to the brakes. Well, actually, uh, then we got the Z1 uh, extended studs up front. Uh, Z1 lightweight two-piece rotated this the the uh, sprinkle sprinkle slotted rotors stop tech street performance pads uh, we got mole tool dot 5.1 brake fluid which is good if you're upgrading the brakes you want your brake fluid to be upgraded as well uh, we got stainless steel braided brake lines to round out the braking system um, going into the transmission and the clutch setup we got uh, upgraded clutch slave and master we got a z1 stainless clutch line z1 performance clutch kit with the lightweight flywheel uh, upgraded clutch fork as well the older z's had a really kind of flimsy clutch fork that would bend and then you wouldn't get good engagement with the clutch fresh amsoil trans fluid uh, we got the z1 poly diff brace or sorry uh, we got the z1 poly trans brace that makes a huge difference and then we got the m tech shifter springs that make that uh, the shifter a lot more firm back and forth it gives you a lot better feel in the shifter uh, then we got z1 poly engine mounts that's made a huge difference to the car again all we're putting all the power to the ground this car doesn't make a ton of power but it's putting every single bit of the power and torque down to the ground uh, we got test pipes I actually don't know the brand. They're unresonated test pipes. We got a Tomei cat back, of course, uh, shaved antenna, new door handles, uh, dark tint. Speaking of the exterior, uh, we got the newer model headlights. Uh, we got the painted rear spoiler, painted roof, and painted mirror caps. All of it's painted, it's not wrapped. It's actual paint and it's actually a Corvette color. It's pretty cool. We got the Mishimoto oil cooler. We got the Z1 engine harness cover we got the z1 plenum spacer painted the the plenum black uh, and the painted throttle body as well we got cannon intake with the afe cone filter so it's actually pulling the air directly in at, um, from the front of the cone so uh, that works perfectly in combination with the carbon fiber uh, bumper vent the intake vent uh, we got double din uh, stereo with the car play. We got Grip Royal steering wheel. We got Corbo DFX seats with slider. Shout out to Corbo for hooking me up with the Corbo DFX seats and five point harnesses. Those are sick. Really hold you nice and firmly into the car uh, and just gives you great control. Helps prevent fatigue uh, and again just kind of combines everything together with how well this car puts the power to the ground, how nimble the car is and you can push its limits because you feel secure in the seat. To go along with the Corbo five point harness, we got the graffiti racing harness bar. We got a Mishimoto weighted shift knob with custom shift boot. I made the shift boot myself. Check out the video, it's pretty awesome. LED interior lights, they go a long way. Suede headliner looks dope. We got LRB speed aluminum door panels, 
combined with the custom graphics from Spinny Woosh, I gave Spinny Woosh the door graphics with the uh, Kong and Godzilla scene. Looks pretty sick. I uh, did a great job printing those. They are super high quality. Uh, then, of course, you can see Cosmos Racing XT006R 18 by 9.5 plus 10 wheels. Uh, they are sick. They look so good. Uh, wrapped in decent tires. I can tell you a little bit about the tires. We got Federals in the rear, Michelin's in the front. There's people that will tell you that you shouldn't mix match or miss and, mix and match your tires. It's nonsense. You totally can. And here's the reason why I do it. Federals have probably the softest, grippiest tire for the money. Uh, really cheap tire, but super, super grippy, especially in the dry. I haven't had any problems in the wet weather, so I, I'd still recommend them. The problem is, is that they're too soft for me in the front and they wear out too fast, especially if you're running a little bit of toe and a little bit of negative camber. Uh, they just burn through the fronts way too fast. So I wanted a little bit more durable, a little uh, tougher tire up front. And that's the other thing. The sidewalls on the Federals are a little bit squishy. Uh, and if you really turn in hard, you can feel the squish on the sidewall in the fronts. So I wanted a tire with a little bit more, a little firmer sidewall too. Uh, so the Michelin's really check those boxes. The other thing is that Federals always run a little bit wide. So you can, I could fit a 265 on here. I would love to get a 275, but I think they'd rub the rear. Uh, so if you get a Federal 265, it sort of fits in the middle there between a, between a 265 and a 275. So it's almost like a 270-ish. So it's, it's nice if you want a little extra beef, and I did. So I got a tire with a little extra meat uh, in the back that's really sticky got a little bit of softer sidewall and this car does not struggle with understeer at all it is so nimble and responsive in the steering so a, a tire like this michelin that's not super soft it's going to be durable running the uh the alignment spec that i have but it's going to still have plenty of grip in the front end to uh, be responsive enough in steering so that's that's a little bit of the, the insight behind why i chose uh the tires that i have on this car of course i got the ebay special uh front splitter i think it looks pretty sick but uh it definitely is cheap it actually fit pretty well i can't complain there uh we got the vic res side splitters but they're actually for the q50 just trimmed down a little bit but they fit good and they actually look pretty sick of course speed culture rocker decal looking good one thing i would say about the brakes is that they are painted a different color gold a little more attractive gold in my opinion of course they're still the brembos but we got the speed culture decal on them as well front and then the brembo decal on the rears but they look super good look at the tome it's a cut rear bumper not folded some people fold them this is cut uh, which is nice perfectly done very very well and it exposes the rear diff and the diff brace and gives you a little bit more visual uh, for the Tomei, which is cool. Nice uh, tinted signals. Uh, you can see again, shaved antenna and shaved rear wiper. So this gives the car a much, much cleaner look. That's a hell of an angle there, buddy. Nice. Carbon fiber wrapped window wipers <laughs> there's just been so much done to this car so much money put in into it so much time and effort put into it if you guys are new to the channel i hope you go check out some of the 350z videos that i've put up uh, installations review videos testing videos uh, i think there's a lot of good stuff out there i tried to fill some of the voids uh, that were left over for the 350z and g35 sort of content uh, on youtube uh, but tons of stuff from upgrading, you know, factory upgrade stuff to performance upgrades. Car so nimble, so tight, so responsive, handles so well. Uh, the bucket seats make it one that you maybe don't want to necessarily drive every single day if you're commuting a long way to work, but you definitely could. Um, it's just, it, it's so responsive. Great sort of dual purpose car. I kind of got what I wanted out of it. Could definitely take it to autocross. Um, and then just cruise around, you know, rip around the highway and stuff around town. Um, but also you could put a little, some different tires on it and you could take it to the drift track and have a lot of fun with it as well. So, uh, man, it's such a good car. It's just kind of at that point now where it's like, what else do you do to it? Do you do anything to it? You know, 
there's some rattles and, so, and stuff. You know, it's not, not perfect by any means. And I did try to do a little bit of weight reduction in the rear end, so you get a little more road noise, you get a little, some more of that vibration and stuff, but it just really kind of feels like a race car. So I enjoy it, I like it, but I don't know that I would try to go forced induction on a, on a 350Z now, on a 20 year old car. I mean, there's still people doing it, but it's been done, right? I mean, YouTube is filled with content like that. So I feel like I'd just kind of be white noise. So I just, I'm not really sure what I want to do at this point either. We just kind of enjoy it like it is. And I do really want to get it to tail of the dragon because it handles the mountain roads in North Carolina so well. But, you know, just kind of up in the air. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want to see any more 350Z content. And if you do, what that content might entail. I'd love, again, to get it out and just kind of rip on it and beat on it a little bit and see what it can do as far as maybe drifting or autocrossing or road racing. Uh, I think it would do really well in any one of those scenarios. But uh, other than that, that's all. That, those are all the mods. Those are really all the mods that I can think of off the top of my head at this point. There's a lot of them, definitely a lot of them. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching. I appreciate the continued support up to this point. More stuff coming for the channel, so I hope you guys will stick around. Might have some surprises coming in 2024 that I'm pretty pumped about, so stick around. Subscribe if you haven't already. Appreciate it, guys. See you in the next one.